It had never been sold ever since it was built in 1806. Um, when we had to transfer the ownership from um, the original members to when our, uh, our charity, it wasn't recorded. There's something called the Land Registry, which recorded, records all the buildings in Manchester, which have been sold, but they're not recorded until they're sold. And so this has never been sold. And so in all the maps... No records. No records. Just an empty corner. And it took us two years before we could actually prove to them that, that <laughs> it was there all the time. But it had never, ever, ever been sold. And people have tried at intervals. They thought it was a a nice, interesting idea to, to take over the portico, and it's, they couldn't because the members wouldn't allow it, you see, because it was, a, it was part of the original foundation. So everybody that belonged to the library had to, had to um, re relinquish their rights and approve it to become a charity. Mm. And once you're a charity, you get much more money. You can get grants for things and all that, which we need to keep it. Well, my name's Janet Allen, and in 1981, I was looking for a job because my children were a bit older, and I thought it was time that I really did some work for my living. And a friend of mine um, had been for a short time the librarian, librarian here at the Portico uh, because she was training, she was finishing her training as a librarian. So she was getting you know, uh, qualifications. So she only stayed for a short time just to get the experience. So I, I, I rang her up and said, do you think I, I could possibly do this job because I don't have any professional qualifications as a librarian and she said I think you could so I went to the interview which was next door next door in the reading room and these two gentlemen sat there in armchairs one each side of the fireplace with all these books all the way around very much as they are still today um, but not, I think, with a, a white tape round them. Uh, and there had been a, there'd been a leak. They turned back the corner of the carpet because there was a bit of damp on the floor. And I asked them what they were going to do with the books. And I think, well, one of the things about the portico is when you come in, it has a special aura, a special atmosphere. Um, and even then, although it was very dark, they'd run out of money, um, you know, the paint was falling off the ceiling, it was all very dilapidated, but it still had that wonderful atmosphere. And I think that that is what got me. Uh, when I got home afterwards, I said to my husband, um, I'm sure I won't get the job, but it was lovely just to be there. <laughs> and um, so I was astonished when they offered it to me. Because they said it was because I was really interested in books. So that was the very beginning. And it was a horrible, wet, dark, frozen winter, very bad winter, and I started uh, at the beginning of January, mm -hmm. came in, and the first thing that I found was that the ceiling in the reading room, which is next door to where we are now, had fallen down because the roof needed mending. So I started from there. Oh, so that was the beginning. Um, but we were very lucky because we just reached the point where the library had more money mm -hmm. in, 
it rented out the ground floor and the, the, the rent had been the same for over 30 years. And it went up, I think, six times. Um, so at last there was a little bit of money to spend. And also we were very lucky because we had the, the uh, we were working with something called the Manpower Services Scheme, which was all about uh, helping people who were unemployed. They were they were given a proper wage for part-time work, and we were able to get people who had trained as librarians but had not had a first job, and they came here and worked with us. And we wanted to know what these books were, because, uh, as it is today, fortunately still, you couldn't read the titles from the spines, and nobody knew what really was here in the library. Well, there were printed catalogues of what had been here, but not necessarily what was there when I joined the library, because many of the books had been lost, and the books were in a big muddle because there was only one person walking, working in the library, only the librarian. So it was hard to climb the ladders because you have to go up ladders, still the same ladders, um, in order to get books down. And in that case, nobody could come in unless you press the bell, mm -hmm. so you, you, you couldn't do that very often. Yeah. Um, so we were lucky because we had volunteers and we had these people who actually been trained as librarians. Mm. And they looked at the printed catalogues and they discovered how the library had originally been arranged. And if you come into the library today, you will see the labels at the top of the bookcases, mm -hmm. um, giving the subjects, famously polite literature, which is the one that everybody remembers. And so that is how the books were originally. But over time, they had got completely disorganized, and quite a lot of the lower shelves, which, which you would reach more easily, were just filled with old novels and things which you know, nobody really wanted anymore. We got this team of people together and they started by taking the books off the shelves, finding how they, how they were originally arranged and trying to get them back into order. And it was very hard. And if you come into the library today, you will see there's a big floor in the centre now, when we first started, that floor wasn't there. It was just glass to let light into the floor below, which was a bank. Mm. So we had to only we could only walk, work around the very edge and a little bit onto the glass. So that was how we started. But the books were very, very dirty and dusty. And so I remember one Easter, when the library was shut, we came in and we, we worked on cleaning the books at the far end in the polite literature section. And they were thick with Manchester dust. Uh, and my daughter, who came to help, um, who was then about 14, I think, remembers climbing these ladders and doing it, you know. And that was the very beginning of what we did. Yes. We were so lucky with the people who came to work with us. It's not simply a question of rebinding the books, because a lot of them are... It's the, the collection is very, very important because it was, it was all made in the 19th century, and it represents what people saw, thought and read at that time. And it is organised in the way that it was, it was done then. But what to do with the books? Well, first of all, you can simply, re possibly, simply rebind them. 
and some of some sections of the library have already been rebound but also because they a lot of them were printed in the middle to late 19th century they were printed on paper which was acidic oh, yeah. and this is the problem mm. so to get rid of the acidity but now and now fortunately we have the, the option of digitizing mm. a lot of the books which we necessarily possibly would we never have never be able to to rebind properly to or to re deacidify properly so we can keep the original books and have the uh, we ha online we can have the the books page by page available to anybody mm -hmm. and that is a wonderful resource not only for the members of the library but also for anybody <laughs> who likes to read what we've got here and that's really exciting um, but we didn't when we started work we didn't we knew about some of the printed catalogues but we didn't know about the archives of the library because um, as you come into the library now you will see that there's a, there's a kitchen and the kitchen was still there but over the kitchen there was a sort of loft where people had put things which they didn't need, didn't want and there were piles of manuscript volumes there and they were the records of the library which had just been forgotten. So now we have records of things like who came in and borrowed which book over, uh, I've forgotten how many years, but something between 10 and 20 years. So you could actually trace who it was that borrowed this particular book and you can find, hopefully, the book on our, on our shelves. And that was a very exciting thing because it brings the 19th century to life but it's no good bringing the 19th century to life unless it's relevant to what we do today and this is the exciting thing about our collection because it, it, it by by contrast by it will tell us so much more about what life was like then and indeed it it echoes with many things that are happening today. Over many years, we have done special exhibitions showing what was in the, in the collection and how relevant it, it, it was, is, still is, always will be to life as it is today. So it's, it's a, it means that history comes alive but more than that today comes alive in a very interesting by comparison the books that we were taking out were all new books because the libra librarian some not my my friend but back from then the librarian it was a very resourceful lady mm -hmm. um, who held the whole thing together but she was fascinated with with writing and books and new books mm -hmm. and that was what she was uh, she was particularly interested in so although and she didn't think that this collection was of any particular interest because she was so interested in writing today and new books and authors and also artists because we had a gallery we exhibited paintings and all that sort of thing so she brought life to the library in spite of everything so we always had new books and before I actually took up work I went, studied went to Waterstones some really good bookshop in Manchester mm -hmm. and find out what all the latest books were because those were what our, our, our members wanted to read. William Gaskell, who was the husband of Elizabeth Gaskell, the novelist, um, was the chairman of the library in the 19th century uh -huh. for 
and I'm sorry I've forgotten, but uh, something like 30 years, and it is put on record that he was the only person who could stop other members of the library arguing and fighting with each other. <laughs> problems of slavery um, and from the very beginning um, the library had a copy of Wilberforce's book on that. Uh, there was Darwin, you know, the change in, changes in the whole idea of the, the beginnings of man um, and there were a lot of uh, our scientific section, although it's not very big, it's got a lot of early books and so there, there was, there was a, lot there, which was very controversial at the time. When you come up this little staircase, and you come into the library and you see this great dome, that takes your breath away. Because the contrast between those little stairs and the great dome is so amazing. But then also we have this lovely reading room, which has an atmosphere of its own. And people can sit there and eat and talk and read books. And um, so those two together make up a very special place. Well, uh, I am very interested in the Manchester author Elizabeth Gaskell because I've been involved in the, the rescue of her house in Manchester. And so, we, fortunately, she was the wife of the chairman. And so we have many of her books here in early editions. And that's, those are one of my favourite books. <laughs> what does the future hold for the library? Well, uh, we have grand plans for the library. Wonderful ideas. Because, as I mentioned, you come up the little staircase to reach the library on the first floor. But originally, the whole building belonged to the library. And the ground floor, which at the moment is a pub, um, was the, uh, the room with the newspapers in it. Newspapers at the beginning of the century were very important because they were very expensive. And so one of the early, one of the most important reasons for joining the portico is you could read all the latest newspapers downstairs. And of course there is a basement which is very big as well. Uh, but then, because the library didn't have enough money, they let all this ground floor basement out, first of all to a bank and then later on to the pub. The great, the great plan now is to regain the whole building uh, so that we could do so much more. There is an amazing amount has been happening in this first floor with a wonderful new staff that are full of enterprising and lovely ideas. And, um, but it's very, very hard because there isn't the space, nor is there the space for it, any more books, really. So if we take the whole building back, we can do all sorts of innovative things which enlarge people's interest in the library so that we can work with school children, with people from all sorts of other communities around Manchester. But in order to do that, we have to do physical things to the building. Uh, we have to put in a lift, because at least at the moment it's not disabled, there's no disabled access. And we have to replace the great staircase at the front of the building, so that instead of coming up the side through this little, you, you, you come up the front stairs and enter the library from there 
and you feel the whole the whole space. Um, so it's not perhaps quite such a surprise as it is going on. So that is the, the great plan for the next few years. The Portico's collection of Northwest fiction was one of the, of the areas which was new to the library after we founded the Portico Prize for writing about the Northwest. And I'm glad to say that my husband uh, designed the book plate, which is still here in this book. Many people will remember Robin Allen for his great enthusiasm for the library. You must come and see the portico, even though you have to climb the stairs. Um, it's an experience you will never forget. It is such a special place. And it's a special place because both the building and the books together make it what it is. But it is the most lovely space. Please come and we have rather good tea and cake. We have a very interesting, innovative exhibitions. And if you want to be a reader, you can come and study the books. And if you, if you become a member, you can borrow all sorts of really new, interesting, exciting new books, as well as borrowing any books of the old books which are able to be taken off the shelves. So please do that. I mean, uh... <laughs>